Today I'm talking about the energy and the process our cells and other animal cells go through to provide themselves with power. Cellular respiration is how we derive energy from the food that we eat, specifically from glucose, since most of what we eat ends up as glucose. Here's the chemical formula for one molecule of glucose. In order to turn this glucose into energy, we're going to need to add some oxygen, six molecules of it to be exact. Through cellular respiration, we're going to turn that glucose and oxygen into six molecules of CO2, six molecules of water and some energy that we can use for doing all of our push-ups. So that's all well and good, but here's the thing. We can't just use that energy to run a marathon or something. First, our bodies have to turn that energy into a really specific form of stored energy called ATP or adenosine triphosphate. You've heard me talk about this before. People often refer to ATP as the currency of biological energy. Think of it as an American dollar. It's what you need to do business in the US. You can't just walk into a Best Buy with a handful of Chinese yen or Indian rupees and expect to be able to buy anything with them, even though they're technically our money. Same goes with energy. In order to be able to use it, our cells need energy to be transferred into adenosine triphosphate to be able to grow, move, create electricity impulses in our nerves and brains, everything. A while back, for instance, we talked about how cells use ATP to transport some kinds of materials in and out of its membranes. To jog your memory about that, you can watch that episode right here. Now, before we see how ATP is actually put together, let's look at how cells can cash in on the energy that's stashed in there. Well, adenosine triphosphate is made up of a nitrogenous base called adenine with a sugar called ribose and three phosphate groups attached to it. Now, one thing you need to know about these three phosphate groups is that they are super uncomfortable sitting together in a row like that. Like three kids on a bus who hate each other all sharing the same seats. So because the phosphate groups are such terrible company for each other, ATP is able to do this nifty trick where it shoots one of the phosphate groups off the end of the seat, creating ADP, or adenosine diphosphate, because now there are just two kids sitting on the bus seat. In this reaction, when the third jerk kid is kicked off the seat, energy is released. And since there are a lot of water molecules just floating around nearby, an OH pairing, that's called a hydroxide, from one of the H2Os comes over and takes the place of that third phosphate group, and everybody is much happier. By the way, 